So I've got this dash pad. It's from a 1967 Dodge Dart. It's old, it's cracked, and I really want to restore it. And I think I have a pretty decent idea of how I want to do that. Now this dash pad is kind of unique because it's a one year only thing. The thing that makes it unique is this little depression right here in the dash pad. I want to try to preserve that to make this thing looking as original as possible, but never done it before, like most of the things on this car. So we'll see how that comes out. And the first thing that I think I need to do is get the rest of this vinyl off. It's dry, it's chipped, and for the most part, it's coming off decent. But I want to do the best that I can to be able to preserve the foam underneath. That's where this guy comes in, the razor knife. Once I find a spot where the foam is sticking, I just give it a little bit of help coming off. That's all. I'm gonna go ahead and work on getting the rest of this off and I'll be back when it's nice and clean. Now that took way longer than I thought it would, but we've got it all off. And I managed to maintain the general shape of the foam. So I'm gonna clean this up quick, then we're gonna to get to laying down some new foam and shaping it. So my idea on how to get this nice and cleaned up is spray foam. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we're gonna try it. I wanna take, put down some spray foam and spread it out, kind of spatula-like. Once it dries and it's gonna fluff up, we'll sand it down and shape it. I'm gonna start with this crack right here. Let's see how this works. Ooh, splurchy. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. Let's uh let's try this. That might be a little too much. Yeah, that's a lot too much. It's interesting. It's like whipped cream, but not. This stuff is sticky. And my idea is as this sets, I'm gonna continue to smooth it out so I don't have quite as much to sand. I'm hoping that works out for me. Alrighty, now that I've got a good layer on there, I'm gonna let that cure overnight and then we'll get to more of it in the morning. Well, it's another beautiful day and our foam is drying. So next thing we get to do, smooth this bad boy out. And I gotta be careful with this. I just want to take the bulk of the foam off with the power sander. Then I'll do the rest of the shaping by hand, maybe. Yeah, I think this is coming out pretty good. Sanders getting off all the spray foam without really getting too much into the foam underneath, still leaving a good seal. So I'm gonna go ahead and bang out the rest of this and we can move on to the next step. All right, now this bad boy is sanded down. We can look at getting the new vinyl cut down to size. I sourced this from Joanne Fabrics of all places. This is uh, marine grade vinyl. They didn't have quite enough for me to get an entire length, so I'm gonna have to go corner to corner, trim it up. Now I have a general idea of how long this needs to be, so I'm gonna trim well past that so I give myself plenty of room to work with. When I stripped all the old vinyl off of this, I was left with these two guide rods underneath, just a couple of pieces of wire, they run right along this edge to help maintain form. I'm taking and sitting them down in the trough that they came out of before taping them in place with a little bit of painter's tape. These wires should help maintain the edge once we're ready to put the vinyl on. Yeah, so even with giving myself some extra material, I still don't think I cut enough. 
So before I go gluing this on and completely ruining it, we're going to try and test fit this to see if it'll work. So right now I'm just starting in the middle. I'm going to hold it in place with clothespins. See if I can't make this work all the way around. I think I'll be able to make this work. But one of my main concerns, how to deal with these corners. This one's not so bad, but this one, there's a lot of extra material. Well, since I'm a dunce and I cut the vinyl too small, time to try another approach. Hopefully I've learned my lesson. And this time, instead of just cutting and guessing, I'm gonna take some fabric material and try to make a pattern. My idea for that is to take that fabric material, wrap it around, hold it in place, trace it out, and then cut it out, giving it some more space. Hopefully the right amount of space this time. So I started out with three yards of pattern material that I've cut in half lengthwise. It's got these nice grid lines on it. And hopefully I can use that to, you know, mark where things should go. I just need to figure out how I want to get this wrapped around. I like to do that without having any seams because that's the way the original was, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. I don't have the skill set to be able to shape vinyl that way. So this face right here is the most important to me. So I could take and clamp this in place and get as close as I can to having this be flush. Now, I shouldn't have too much in the way of seams here. And as I find the top to be very important as well, I think right here is gonna be my best bet for a spot for a seam, because that's gonna leave us a nice short seam. Since it'll be on the top running between the edge of the dash and the A-pillar, it'll be kind of out of the way. So that's where we're gonna go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this secured in place so I can start marking where I wanna cut. It's time to start making some marks. This leading edge is pretty straightforward. It actually runs almost right along one of the blue lines here. Doesn't have to be straight. Looks like I might also have some bunching here in this corner and in this one as well. I also wanna mark both sides of where my seam is gonna go. I think we'll have to flip this over to do that good though. Well, good. Yeah, that. There we go. And with all of our marks drawn, it's time to get all of our clips off and see what we got. Get off, sticky. Seems to have done pretty well. I'll get a straight edge and clean these lines up and then we can get to cutting this bad boy out. Now that we've got our lines cleaned up, I'm gonna go ahead and get to cutting this out. I'm gonna come out from these lines about an inch. And now that I have the pattern cut out, it really should be enough this time. I'm gonna take my time this time, cut nice and slow. Trim off a little bit of the time. Kind of like I do when I'm making a patch for welding in. Trim it down until it fits. What the hell do I do with this? It'll do. Now the one thing that I notice is that my lines on each side don't line up. That means my seam's not gonna line up either. So that makes me wonder, do I change my lines to make them match? Or do I just assume that my dash pad is not symmetrical and run with it? Running it is! But before I go sauntering off, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, test fit this again. It's weird how much this is like welding. Uh, I think that'll do for now. Now it's time to transfer this to this. I think we'll do that inside on the floor where there's not as much dirt. We'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back now. I got my main piece of vinyl cut out and I got my pattern taped onto the vinyl. So now it's just time to cut it out. I am taking this nice and easy and I gave myself plenty of extra space. Apparently that chipmunk is not at all happy with me cutting up the vinyl. Must be doing a bad job. Alrighty, spin it around, get this end. Now that I've got my hunk of vinyl cut out, I'm gonna test fit it and then I'm gonna trim it, and then I'm gonna fit it, and then I'm gonna trim it, and I'm gonna fit it until it's ready to go on. I'm not gonna bore you with all that because it's gonna be a while. So we'll be back in a minute. Now that we've got this thing cut up and trimmed, I think I'm gonna go ahead and get her attached. For that, I'm using Weldwood Contact Cement. Paint this stuff on till it's nice and glossy. 
let it sit for an hour, and then uh, stick them together. Sounds fun. It says to stir it. I don't have a stir stick, so we're gonna shake it. Never mind. I found a stir stick. Oh yeah, this is uh, cementy. Ooh, it's weirdly milky. Huh? Doesn't stink to high hell either. Oh no, that's not good. No, we're just gonna go with the shaking. This is kind of like watching paint dry. Well, still not all that warm out. And this has been sitting for about three hours now. So hopefully we are ready to get this thing put together. Nope, it's not tacky. The instructions did say that porous materials might need a second coat, so. I'm doing that now. All right, back to the drying board. So we're on yet another day. Uh, the foam of the dash pad just kept sucking in the glue. So I ended up doing, I don't know, three, four coats. And then I left to sit overnight for two more coats on today. So hopefully we could put this thing together. not the right spot. Oh boy. Oh, there we are. All right, well, that's a start. I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can't get this thing finished up. This is not lined up quite right, which means I'm gonna have to take it apart and that's gonna suck. You know, this is vinyl and it's warm and it stretches. So let's see if we can't make use of that. Oh, there we are. I think this roller is going to do a really good job of adhering the contact cement. Yeah, that'll do it. So we found a problem. And that problem is we sealed both edges here. So now, a nice big bubble of air stuck up under there. And I gotta figure out how to get it out. We're gonna see if we can't work this air bubble out down on the end. Seems to be coming out on this end, so hey, let's go the other way with it. This is actually really hot now. Woo, sitting in the sun. There we go. There. Now this thing is by no means perfect, but for a first time, pretty happy with it. I'm gonna have to seal up the seam on this side and figure out what I need to do to fix that. Also need to throw down some more contact cement in here so I can get this side to fold over and kind of stick like so. Same with this and this and this. Now I kind of have an idea. So this side came out with a seam that I was able to fold over to where this side didn't. I think my solution to that is gonna be into this piece of scrap right here. I'm just gonna take, cut out a piece, fold it over to make its own seam and lay it right over top. It's gonna look like shit, but my other option is to tear this thing apart and start again, which if this doesn't come out right, I might do anyway and holding it up to the spot, I hate it. So I'm gonna leave it as is for now and probably gonna end up redoing this at another time. That's the basics. Didn't come out fantastic, but it is in way better condition than it was when I took it off. So yeah. So if you wanna see the entire process of restoring this dash, check out this video right here.